get ready to create your own AI chatbot for free using the OpenAI Python package. This AI chatbot will save all the conversations and you can even share it with others online to impress your friends, crush and everyone in between. Don't worry, if you are new to Python, I will explain every line of code. So let's get started. The very first thing you need to do is to install OpenAI package. So for that type pip install OpenAI, this will install OpenAI package in your computer. As you can see, it says requirement already satisfied, which means I have already installed OpenAI library in my computer. So after you install it, all you have to do is to import it in your Python file. So for that type import and then the OpenAI. This is the library that we just installed. After this, using the library that we just installed, we need to enter our API key. So for that type OpenAI, which is our library name dot API key, because we are accessing that API key variable from that library and then enter your API key. If you want to use official OpenAI's API key, you can log into your OpenAI account and from here, you can go to API key section and then click on create a new secret key and then you can name it anything that you want and after that copy the secret key and paste it here. But since I have a free account, I won't be able to use this API key. So to use this API key, I need to upgrade my OpenAI account. But I'm not going to do that. And like me, if you also want to use it for free, we can use reverse proxy. So for that, search for chat GPT reverse proxy on Google and then click on this first result that is a GitHub repository by Pawan Usman. Here you will find a link to join their Discord channel. Join it and then get inside the bot channel and then type slash key command to get yourself an API key. And instead of using the OpenAI API key, you need to use this for your reverse proxy. So copy it from here and paste it here. Like me, if you are also going to use reverse proxy, you need to add one more line to your code by using another variable from OpenAI that is API base and here we need to enter the link of our reverse proxy. These are the two links that you can use. The first one is filter one and the second one is unfilter one. You can use any one of these. If one is not working, try another one because their servers go down sometimes. Now our API setup is ready. Let's see if it works or not by fetching the list of models that are available. For that, we are going to use the list method of the model class of the OpenAI library. This will fetch the list of models available and store it in our models variable. After that, we can simply print it to see the list of models. As you can see, we got list of models. The first one is GPT 3.5 Turbo, then the text Da Vinci and other models. This means we got response from the OpenAI server, which means our reverse proxy API setup is working correctly. Now to chat with the model, this is the line that you have to use. And I found it in their documentation. So what we need to do is we need to use the create method from the chat completion class of the OpenAI library. And that create method takes two argument. First the model. So here we are using GPT 3.5 Turbo and then the messages. In messages, your role should be user and then the content should be any message that you want to send. So let's print this chat completion and let's run this code to see the response that we get. This is the response that we got from the server. Our reply is stored in this content section. Let's break this down. First of all, this is a dictionary with key value pairs. So let's remove key value pairs that we don't need. We are going to need choices because in choices we got message and in message we got content. So choices is a list. And in that list, there is one dictionary. So by default, it is at zeroth position and we don't need this too. So let's remove it. Since choices is a list and in that list, there is one dictionary. So let's remove unwanted things that we don't want from this dictionary. This message is also a dictionary with content, the response that we get and then the role that is assistant. So the reply that we get from the model has the role assistant. Now, how can I simply print the value stored in this content instead of printing this big dictionary? For that, first I will type chat completion, which is our dictionary. And from that dictionary, I want to access choices. So I will type dot choices. And since choices is a list, I want to access the first element from that list. So I will type zero and that element is dictionary. And from that dictionary, I want to access the value of message key. So I will type dot message. And from that message dictionary, I want to access the value of content key. So I will type dot content. And now if I will run this code, I will only see the reply that I got from the model without any extra information. If I will change this hello world to something else, for example, tell me five tips to be a better speaker. And if I will run this code, I will get a response for that message. So our basic chatbot is ready that you can use in your terminal. 
But if I will do something like this, tell me more about option 2, it won't work because it will not have the history of our messages to refer to. See, I get this response, I apologize but I need some more information blah blah blah. That is because our chatbot does not have access to our previous messages. So let's implement a history feature in our chatbot. But before that, let's create a message variable that will hold our message, for example, hi. And instead of directly passing the message here, we will pass a message variable so that we can control our messages from the message variable. And as you can see, it works perfectly. To create a history feature, we need to save our messages into a list. So for that, let's create a history variable which will hold list of messages. Right now it is empty. After that, let's use a while loop so that our chatbot will keep running. So for that, simply type while true so that it will be always true. And then we can put all of this code inside that while loop by indenting it once. After this, instead of hard coding the value of message in our code, we will ask the user to enter the message using the input function from Python. Inside this input function, we will write enter message or type quit to exit so that user will know that he has to enter message or if he wants to exit from the program, he or she needs to type quit. And then we will use if statement to check if the message is equal equal to quit. If it is equal to quit, then we will break from this while loop and our program will close. The next thing we can do is same like saving our message into the message variable. We will also save the response that we get from the model inside the response variable. After this, we can save our message and the reply that we get from our model and we will save them in the same format we send them. That is in dictionary format. First there will be the role that will be the user and then the content that will be our message. And for reply, the role will be assistant and the content will be response. After this, instead of passing single message to our model, we will pass the history of our messages. Since this line adds the given message to the history, let's keep it before sending the request for chat completion so that our history will contain that message. And now if I will run this code, as you can see, we got an error. That is because in history, we are storing list of messages and this content takes a string of message. But this messages takes the list of messages in the same way we have stored in our history. So we can erase all of this and we can pass our history to this messages argument. Now let's run our program again and let's see if it works or not. Enter a message. Hi. Enter a message. Okay. We don't see any response. And that is because I forgot to print the response. So let's print the response at the end of our while loop using the print function. And now let's rerun this program again. Here we go. Hi. And here is our response. Hello. How can I assist you today? Let's try something else like tell me 5 tips to grow on YouTube. And here are those 5 tips. Maybe I should start following them. Let's see if our history feature works or not by asking more information about the first tip that is consistency. And here we go. We got more information. That means our history feature is working perfectly fine. Now, as you can see, we cannot clearly differentiate which is our message and which is the reply from the model. So instead of simply printing the response, we can print something like this message and then the value of message, response and then the value of response. Let's see if it works or not. As you can see, message high and then the response. It looks pretty good. But there is one more thing. We cannot exit from this program using quit message. That is because in this if statement, we are comparing message to an inbuilt function called quit. So to avoid that, we can put this quit inside double quotes. And now it will work perfectly fine. Now let's add another feature into our chatbot that is to save our messages in a text file so that if it is important, we can access it later. You can do that by entering these three lines at the end of your code. The first line opens chat.txt file in append mode and then the second line writes our message into that and then the third line writes the response into that. Let's see if it works or not. Here we go and some random chat and let's see if we got a file named chat.txt or not. And here we go, chat.txt file with all the messages saved inside that. So this is how you can save all your chats. But we don't want to save all our chats into the same file. So for that, we can dynamically create file name based on the first message. To implement this first, let's add a boolean variable that is first message equals to true. And then we can have some condition like this. If first message, that means if first message is true, file name equals message. That means the value of file name will be the same as the value of message. And then we will open a text file with the same value of the message using the file name variable here. 
after assigning the value of message to our file name we will make first message equals false so that this line will not run again and all our chats will be saved in that same file so let's see if it works or not here we go and let our first message be tell me about python this is the response that we got let's exit from our chatbot by typing quit and if i will see in my file explorer i will see tell me about python.txt with all of my messages saved of the previous chat so this is working correctly but if the first message will be so large our file name will also be large to avoid that we can use the slicing technique in this line after message if i will enter this square brackets then colon and 20 which means only take first 20 characters from the message as a file name so our file name will only be max length of 20 characters see even though here my first message is more than 20 characters the file name for this chat session was small if you want you can increase it to 40 characters or 50 characters anything that you want let me show you what happens if we don't use only first 20 or 50 characters for the file name as you can see here the file name is so big so to avoid the file name being too big we can use slicing techniques now our chatbot has every basic feature like we can save our messages, we have our history feature. The only one thing we are lacking is a good user interface. So to create a good user interface of our chatbot, we can use Gradio. For those who don't know, Gradio is a Python library that can be used to quickly create user interfaces for your machine learning models. So let's install Gradio by typing pip install Gradio. For me, I've got it already installed. That's why requirement already satisfied. After that, import Gradio inside your Python file using import Gradio. And then write this line that is with gradio.blocks as chatbot UI. That means we will be creating user interface using Gradio and the name for that user interface is chatbot UI. Inside this, you can add items to your user interface. Like if you want to add any HTML code, you can use gradio.markdown and in triple quotes HTML code. For example, here I have added one heading with the value of my first AI chatbot. And then to launch your UI, you can type your UI name that is chatbot underscore UI and then dot launch. Let's see if it works or not. As you can see, our while loop is executing. So for the time being, let's comment our while loop and let's run it again. It is not working. That is because I forgot to add this parenthesis because the launch is a function and we need to add this parenthesis. And now if I will run this again. I will see a local link if you will click on it you will see your user interface as you can see here this is my user interface with just one block that is one heading so right now this gets locally hosted on your computer later in this video we will see how to make it online so that you can access it from your phone laptop or any other device that has a web browser now let's add one more element to our interface that is chat box using chatbot element from the gradio in this we will display all our messages we also need something to receive input from the user. So for that, let's add a text box using this line. This is how it looks. If we want to hide this label, in our code, we can make show label argument to false. And then you can also add some placeholder. Placeholder is nothing but a display text that will be shown on our text box when it is empty. So let's add something like chat with me about anything that you want. Now we don't see text box label and our placeholder is visible too. How to make all of this work now to display all the messages here and to receive input from the user. Since we have named our text box as txt, we can use submit method of the text box, take input from the user and display the conversation. Here we are simply coding that what will happen after submitting the data of the text box. As you can see here, this submit method requires a function to be executed. It is compulsory and then some other optional arguments. But right now we don't have any function defined. So let's create a function that will handle all things that we are doing in this while loop. We can define function using def keyword in python. So let our function name be chatbot. After this, let's remove this if statement. We don't need it anymore. Since we are referring to the first message variable that is outside of our function, we need to add this line that is global first message so that our function will use this first message variable. And then we no longer need to print message and response in our terminal. So let's remove these two. And now this function should return something because it will be used to update our user interface. We got two elements in our UI, the chat box and the text button. So we will need to return two things. The first one for text box and second one for chat box. First, we will return an empty string that will be for our text box. So after submitting the value of text box will be empty string. 
then for chat box we will need to return our conversation but chatbot does not take input of conversation in the same way we have stored it in our history it takes list of tuples with tuple containing message and reply values like this but in our history we are storing messages as a list of dictionary and that dictionary contains role and content value to use these in our chatbot we will need to somehow extract these messages from our history and then save it in our conversation variable as a list of tuples which contains message and reply for that we can use this one liner here we are looping from zero to the second last message and then we are creating a tuple from that with first value from content as message and i plus 1 will be reply in this loop the step size is 2 that means the value of i will be incremented by 2 after every loop that is because in a tuple we are storing two messages so after that next two something like that so now we've got our function ready let's pass it to the submit method of our text box button and then we need to pass the value of the text box as an input to our function so that we can send that message to our model that means the value of the text button will be given as input to the chatbot function that we just created and then outputs that means where should the output of the function go so the first output will go to our text box because we are sending an empty string and then the conversation should go to our chatbot object so that we can see all our conversations there that's why output the first output to text box and then the second output to chatbot since we are passing the value of text box to our function we need to accept it here so we will name that value message and then we can remove this line that takes input from the user in the terminal we don't need it anymore after this if i will run this code and try to use it it is working fine for the first message but if i will send my second message i will get an error and the error is cannot access local variable file name that is because right now our file name variable is local variable so in simple words it gets deleted after the function ends for the first time it works fine cause it gets initialized so it will be accessible here in this line but we also make first message equals false so when this function runs for the second time the line is skipped and since file name variable is already deleted after the function ended for the first time we are unable to access it here to fix this we can create a file name variable outside our function and give it some default value for example default and then we can reference it in our function using global keyword and now it will work fine let's see here is our first message and it is working fine here goes the second message and we got our response so it is working fine and our save feature is also working fine see this is the file that got created from that session but if i will ask my chatbot to send me some emojis it will throw an error and that error is encoding error because when we are writing on our text file we are not specifying what type of encoding to use so for that simply add this argument that is encoding equals utf/8 and it will work perfectly fine to make this online all you have to do is in this launch method you need to enter this share equals true and this will give you a public url copy it and paste it in any browser and you will be able to access your chatbot from there but as you can see when i am trying to send my first message using phone i get an error that is because the phone's enter key is interpreted as backslash n and it is throwing error when saving the file to fix this we can add one submit button using this line and then the actions that we were performing when submitting text value we will perform the same actions when clicking on this send button so now we are going to send messages using this send button so we won't get that error so this is how you can simply create a chatbot in python that can be accessible from anywhere from your phone computer laptop i will upload this code on github and i will provide link in description or comment section and that's it for this video don't forget to drop a like